to an incredibly touching story now. And it concerns the, uh, the efforts that local people go to in making sure that their dying loved ones have the most special experiences in what they know will be their, their final moments. And this story takes us to Cynthia Spencer Hospice, where one patient, a lifelong fan of Elvis Presley, requested at quite short notice that an Elvis impersonator could perhaps come to their bedside to perform. Well, the hospice team put out an appeal on social media and talented local performer Paul Robinson answered the call. The room was decorated in Elvis paraphernalia and when Paul arrived, he didn't disappoint. He was incredible to look at. The hair, the sideburns, the jumpsuit. Well, Jamie Smith was charge nurse at the hospice on that day and he told me how this request came about. It was about two or three weeks ago and um, I believe the consultant was doing his ward round as as always and this patient had had made it clear that she was a a huge fan of Elvis Presley. She'd always wanted to go to to Graceland, never quite able to do it, but loved Elvis, loved all his music, really wanted to see the film and it was just from there really that this um, idea stemmed and the Cynthia Spencer Hospice fundraising team got behind it and basically made so many wishes come true for this this wonderful lady and we had this Elvis impersonator come in Paul Robinson who was fantastic um the fundraising team funded cardboard cutouts of Elvis which were around the lady's bed she had an Elvis t-shirt she was bought a blanket um, and there was Elvis Presley masks which were being held or worn by the staff so all in all it was just such a special occasion it's really what hospice care is all about it's a terrific thing you all did together and i mean i've seen a picture of paul he looked great he really looked the part (laughs) for anyone that's not seen the picture describe what paul was wearing on the day it's exactly how you imagine elvis to be in his prime he looked like elvis and he sounded like elvis he was wearing like this blue and white open top shirt and trousers one piece suit um he'd got the quiff He'd got the voice. And I mean, I've seen a number of like tribute acts over the years, but he absolutely nailed it as Elvis. He was really good. And he did a full 45 minute set. He did If I Could Dream. He was doing Burn in Love, Viva Las Vegas, all the classic Elvis hits. It was just incredible. I've heard him sing and he is top notch. He's absolutely top notch. 45 minutes. That's brilliant. You know, not just turn up and do a song, a whole set for for yeah. this uh, this special person is it common for people to to make requests of how they'd like to spend their their final weeks perhaps their final day or, or their final hours i think it has been more common in the past i mean i know it's mentioned a lot and unfortunately covid played a big part in putting a halt to a lot of things but it is certainly something that Cynthia Spencer Hospice and their fundraising team are really key in playing a part of making wishes come true and they have been so amazing over the years in if if somebody has has voiced that there's a a request that they'd love to do in you know their final weeks or there's something that they've always wanted to do that they've just not had chance to do then the fundraising team are absolutely top notch in making those wishes come true I can remember some years ago patient adored monkeys and the, the fundraising team funded transport and tickets to go to monkey world in devon and back in a day things like that it's just it really makes the job that little bit more special that's great that's incredible and and how do these conversations take place i'll be honest i struggle with the idea that that someone is is unwell and they and they know that the end is coming you know, it's something, it's a position that I can't, I can't put my brain into that space. I can't imagine how it is to feel like that. And, and, yeah. and do these, do these requests, do they come up in conversations towards the end of their time at the hospice? Or are there some people that, you know, have always known that if that time comes, this is exactly what they want to do? I think, um, like you touched on, Tim, it's more about in conversation. I mean, obviously, there's several people involved in that individual's care. So you've got nurses healthcare assistants doctors that are all seeing the patient throughout the day maybe the patient's having a wash and it comes up in conversation what they've been watching on tv or what they've listened to on the radio who they love things like that and i think that's where these ideas generally stem from and it it goes from there really 
Um, and obviously patients talk about experiences, holidays they've had, family come and visit. So these conversations kind of naturally come about. And during the performance, this 45 minute, how would you describe yeah. the, the emotional state of the patient who, who'd requested this? It, it must have been a, a phenomenal thing for them to take in. Yes. Yeah, it was um, incredibly emotional, I think, f- not just for the patient, even I think the staff that were, that were seeing it, because it's been such a, a long time since these kind of things have happened um, for obvious reasons. But I mean, the patient was absolutely it, enthralled by it. She was tapping her foot along to it. Very, very poorly lady, but she uh, her face lit up. Um, Paul came right up to her bed, held her hand and sang to her. And I mean, after the performance, he actually, um, he left his sunglasses and scarf with her and he got out of his, his outfit and sat chatting to her for 15 minutes afterwards. So he, he was just absolutely great. You all do incredible work, Jamie. And um, yeah. um, thank you so much for sharing that story story with us and uh, and keep up that good work, heroes. Thank you. Well, they really are. They really are. Jamie Smith, who was charge nurse at the hospice, Cynthia Spencer Hospice, on that day that uh, the patient's wish was granted. And we mentioned their Graceland. I'll ask you for stories, if you've got any, if anyone's been to Graceland. What is that experience like? What do you do when you're there? Any Elvis fans out there? If you can share your story on the programme, 81333, start your message with me.